My name is Nina Zane and I work at The River Project as the head of interns. The River Project is a nonprofit organization. We have been around since 1986 and we do environmental education and restoration ecology in the Hudson River. So our biggest problem right now is the PCBs. They are causing cancer in a lot of different fish. They cause liver tumors and tomcod. The PCB thing is just from people dumping it their like waste after industrial activities and right into the river. A lot of other pollution comes from um, CSOs, which are combined sewer overflows. And that is uh, when it rains, if it rains a quarter of an inch in New York City, all of the sewers just overflow. So all of our raw sewage, anything that you're putting down your drains in your house is just going straight into the river. The way our sewer system was created, extra water just goes right into the river. So when it rains, everything on the streets gets washed into the sewers and then those get washed into the river because our water treatment plants aren't good enough to take the water load. There is the sturgeon. It used to be all over the Hudson River. They used to come here to breed and now they have tagged 60 this year that came back and there used to be like 10,000 of them. There's actually a lot of small nonprofit organizations like the River Project that are working I guess mostly their biggest thing is to get oysters in the river right now. Just to survey and try to find out what here is here happens a lot and just to watch the river. We have about 3,000 to 4,000 oysters at the River Project that we are growing and they are ages made from two years to eight years now. So that is a feat in the Hudson River. They do actually have some natural diseases here that kill them in between their second and third years. So we've had a lot of problems with that. Definitely the biggest thing is don't litter. Everything that you throw on the ground just gets put right into the Hudson. That is the biggest, easiest, like simplest thing. Is just throw everything in a garbage can. And um, also if it's raining outside, you could refrain from just things like doing laundry or taking really long showers could help with the sewer overflows. Just try not to use too much water when it's raining. I'm Alex Smith. I work at Solar One in our education department and I primarily focus on the New York City estuary. Solar One, um, our tagline is that we are a green energy arts and education center. We do programming to raise awareness on renewable energy and we do a lot of um, educational programs for K through 12 inner city kids that might not have as great of an understanding of environmental issues. Primarily we are educating people about why it's important to take care of our waterways and be stewards of our natural environment. And we are also programming with organizations such as the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper, which has a oyster gardening program to try to restore oysters in the New York City Harbor, which naturally filter water and improve the estuary's function. It's hard to, to measure the impact you have on an individual through education. Um, I don't know if we have a, a metric yet defined of how we're actually being successful, but I know we are reaching thousands of inner city kids that may otherwise not realize that the estuary is still a place where there is life and there is ecological importance to us. And hopefully just by them understanding that a little bit better than maybe they would have without us, we're having a positive change. I think the most important thing you can do as individuals is just make your fellow New Yorkers aware that these, the, the Hudson, the East River, the Harlem River is a place where there are still natural, there's still natural function. There's animals, they're important to our quality of life. It's lazy to, to litter on the street and to be mindful of the water you use because this does have an effect on the, the rivers. One of the biggest issues in New York City's water right now is hydraulic fracturing which is this process where energy companies, primarily natural gas companies, drill down horizontally in the earth and cause explosions in rock formations to get pockets of gas loose from the rocks and sucked up into pipelines so that we can capture it. And this process not only causes explosions in the natural gas, but they dump down chemicals to help break up the rocks. and. This can contaminate groundwater supplies. In certain areas of Pennsylvania where hydraulic fracturing has been occurring, people are getting sick from chemicals in their waterways and their tap water in some cases is actually explosive because 
the groundwater has been polluted with natural gas. It's a very serious issue. New Yorkers are starting to become more and more aware of it and speaking out against it, but it's, it's just starting to get the coverage and it needs to get a lot more. There's nine million residents that get their, their drinking water from upstate New York unfiltered. And if hydraulic fracturing contaminates our drinking supply, where are those nine million people gonna drink water from? Pollution free is tough. I think uh, the major thing, the major setback on that right now will be the, the decades and centuries of pollution we've put into that. Um, in, in the Hudson, in a, a little bit upstate New York, they're doing all this stuff to remediate where industries have dumped chemicals. And that might be a, a process that takes decades to fix. So it'll be tough to see if we can ever get there. But hopefully. I'm hopeful we will.